Hi, in this demo we will access Grub to interrupt the Linux boot process using the Azure Serial Console. Note Grub and SysRQ configuration may not be configured for accessing your virtual machine. I have increased the Grub configuration timeout counters for the purpose of this demo. In this demo, we will also have a look at the value of having sysrec keys configured and how we can invoke them. By appending the keywords to a kernel we wish to load, such as init equals bin slash bash, we will force the kernel to replace the initialization phase of the Linux boot process and drop us into a Linux shell prompt. This obviously gives way to many recovery scenarios. So this method can be used for various scenarios. No SSH into a Linux virtual machine has a number of underlying root causes from a lost password or problems with credentials, misconfigured slash etcfs tab where disks are incorrectly configured, incorrectly configured firewalls or other networking configurations, misconfigured SE Linux, and I'm sure there are other scenarios as well. So let's attempt to access the Linux virtual machine with the known username and password. That returns an error. We've entered the incorrect password. We don't remember the credentials. Now we couldn't reset the password and credentials using the Azure portal. There is a feature reset password on the Azure portal, but this requires that the agent be ready and our virtual machine has the agent status as not ready. So we're unable to use this feature of reset password. So unable to use this. So traditionally what we would have done in a scenario like this where you have no agent password and you did not have the serial console, you would have deleted the virtual machines, um, you would have deleted the virtual machine and moved the VHD to a temporary machine, or you would have used a disk swap to perform the corrective action. So if we now go to the serial console, we have a login prompt. And we have we don't have the password, so we can't log on here either. So what we can do is we can restart the machine and interrupt the boot process. Now, with the serial console, we have the opportunity to send what's known as the sysrec sysrq commands, um, and you have to configure the kernel to accept these keys. And what I was doing earlier, I can show you that this parameter has been set. So by running the command sysctl-a, it's listing the kernel parameters. And I was uh, grepping, so uh, extracting the sysrq parameters. And what I've done is I've basically set the key to one, which means that it will ex all commands issued by the serial console to the virtual machine by this functionality will be accepted by the virtual machine. Unable to log on to this machine, I'm going to send a reboot command. And we see that's been accepted by the VM. And I've configured it for a countdown. So I hit the S while that countdown is happening. And here we have the kernels uh, for Ubuntu. So I'm going to um, press the E key as shown here. Select E to edit the commands. So that will be E. And then I'm going to locate the line that loads the Linux kernel. So that's this line here. And this um, this keyword Linux does vary from distro to distro and from grub1 to grub2. Um, and while we're here, I'll show you the, uh, the, uh, the root file system, which is loaded or where the kernel is loaded from is this parameter here, root equals. So, at the end of this command, we're going to append the keyword init, which is the initialization program you remember from sys5 init or systemd initialization. We're going to replace 
the initialization program by forcing the machine to drop into a bash shell. So init equals bin bash. And then on this particular distro, control X to force the machine to boot with these parameters. And that'll take a few moments. Okay, so you can see that the uh, machine has booted and we have a, a bash prompt. So if we do a df-h to display the file partitions, we can see that the root file system is indeed mounted. Now, if we try to create a file on the root file system, so touch test, it's a read-only file system. So we cannot change anything in this file system. So um, you should know that the username and passwords are stored in the VI, uh, in the, sorry, in the etc password file, which we will try to VI. And that will also say it's a read-only file. So we cannot change anything to the password file, meaning we cannot change the user account, the password that we've lost. So what we have to do is we have to remount the file system, which is the uh, root file system, uh, minus O, read-write, remount, root file system. So that will remount the file system with read write. So now if we do a VI on ETC password, it no longer says read only. So what we can do is issue a password. Let's get rid of those text messages that are coming from the console. Password, uh, my account that I want to change is Azure Admin. So I'm going to specify a new password. And you can see that the password has updated successfully. So now that we've updated the password, we can reboot the system, bringing it up to uh, run level three, and then log back onto the system using our terminal emulator. So our system has booted up. Let's try connecting now. So the new password I inserted, and there we are, we've logged on. So as you can see, by accessing Grub, forcing the system into a recovery mode or a pending init bin bash, will get you into the shell prompt and you can perform many admin activities such as changing configuration files for SSH or FS tab um, or changing firewall configurations 